Okay, first time in over two weeks that I've actually had the desire to film a video, right? Got the camera going, I got the light set up, I got everything else ready, and all of a sudden I need to make an emergency run to the restroom. It's like if that doesn't scream 2020, what does, right? Greetings, one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. I've got a fun, interesting little topic for today's video for you guys. Uh, it occurred to me actually just a few days ago, the idea for this video. Uh, it was during the last 15 or 20 minutes of my most recent Lunchtime with Tom live stream, the season finale, if you will. Uh, a fellow YouTuber that I've admired for a few uh, months now, Jack's Tracks Records, popped in on the uh, discussion for the last 10 or 15 min minutes, as I said. And he started asking me a few questions about my listening habits, my music collection, and whatnot. And so that's how this idea occurred to me. Uh, as you guys may, may or may not know, I have uh, been gradually buying and listening to more vinyl in the last couple of years. Uh, I grew up listening to CDs. You know, CDs were the, the format, the it format, uh, for most of my life uh, until just recently. And I just, you know, when I replaced my stereo back in 2017, I think it was. Uh, I just started getting more and more into vinyl, and I've been buying more and more vinyl over the last couple of years. I think I should have been keeping track, but I think I, I am actually buying more vinyl than I have been CDs lately. But it th got me to thinking, I've over the last year or so, I have replaced, probably the last couple of years, I have replaced a lot of my CD, CDs that I've had in my library with their vinyl counterparts. So I thought I'd give you guys a list of 12. It was going to be 10, but I just expanded it to 12 artists or albums that I used to own the CDs of that I have since replaced them with the vinyl record uh, editions of. So let's just get on with that list. Uh, first one that came to mind, and uh, again, co color coordination with the shirt here, not intentional. Uh, Christopher Cross, his self-titled debut album. It's a great album. I, I did own it on CD, as I, as I mentioned before. But uh, as much as good as Sailing is, his signature song or his biggest hit, uh, if you're not familiar with Ride Like the Wind, You've got to listen to that song. But yeah, this is just a great album. It won, I believe it won Album of the Year at the Grammys for its uh, respective year. So, wonderful album. And I've also got his uh, follow-up. I cannot remember the name of it off the top of my head, but yeah, wonderful album. And yes, I am starting off, as you may notice, with a bunch of 80s stuff with you know, my decade. Uh, Toto 4, their most popular and most successful album. Africa and Rosanna are on this album. And yes, I did own it, actually owned it fairly briefly on CD. That was just as I was starting to get more into vinyl. And uh, it ended up in the New Arrivals used section at House of Records shortly after I bought the CD. And I decided, hell, I won't just get the vinyl, even though I had, ju I had just spent money on the CD. I had to have it on vinyl, because it is a classic. Toto's a great band from the 80s, and it's an absolute classic album. And then uh, more on the pop side of things, we have Wham! and their album Make It Big. And of course, uh, Careless Whisper, Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go. That's like one of the peppiest, poppiest songs ever. Uh, and also one of the whitest songs ever. Uh, I, I can get to that in a different video. Uh, Freedom, another great song off there. I mean, you can poke fun at Wham all you want to, but this album is just loaded with good, good songs. And uh, we should have known that George Michael was going to go on to have a fantastic solo career after Wham uh, disbanded. So yeah, very good stuff. And then on to the, the, the girl side of things. The Go-Go's, Beauty and the Beat. Uh, another classic album from the 80s. And uh, We Got the Beat, of course, is uh, one of their biggest hits. Our Lips Are Sealed is another fantastic song on here. And yes, I had this one for two or three years uh, on uh, CD, only for a few years before I replaced it with vinyl. So for a long time, I was all about the greatest hits and only got Artists' Greatest Hits albums. It was only in recent years that I've really started delving into actually buying the albums you know, and, and exploring the deeper album cuts and stuff. So a lot of stuff I had been missing for all those years. I regretted my, you know, waiting so long to do that. But uh, next band, Asia. Uh, I've actually got two albums that I used to used to have both of them on CD. Uh, their self-titled debut as well as Alpha, their sophomore album. Bunch of great stuff on here. They, they are technically a super group. Uh, from, uh, artists, uh, uh, members of Yes and a few other groups participated in Asia. Heat of the Moment, Only Time Will Tell, and uh, that's on their debut album, on their sophomore album. Don't Cry is a fantastic song. Again, I, I sound like a broken record, <laughs> pun intended, but another great artist from the 80s. And uh, moving forward in time a little bit, uh, leaving the 80s behind, at least for now, is a group called The Laws, and this was their uh, only album. It was self-titled, their debut album. I guess if it was their only album, it had to be their debut, huh? <laughs> no. Anyway. 
you may know the laws from their one and only hit, uh, There She Goes, huge song, one of the biggest songs of the 80s, and I guess the laws were kind of uh, destined to be a one-hit wonder if they only put out one album. But uh, yeah, the rest of this album is just great. I mean, it's, 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 you know, in that way, they don't really deserve to be one-hit wonders. But uh, yeah, this this band, apparently the front man was an intense perfectionist from what I hear. And yeah, this album was just such a labor to make. He wanted everything to be just just so. And so I think that's probably the main reason why they never went on to make a second album. And I actually used to own this, the deluxe version of this a of while ago. And uh, one reason, one motivator for me in uh, getting... You know, replacing some CDs with LPs in my collection is shelf space. I don't have a whole lot of shelf space left for CDs uh, unless I, I would have to really improvise in, in order to expand my shelf space. Uh, but I still have, as of right now anyway, plenty of space on my uh, LP racks. So, uh, but yeah, this was a, a great one. And another motivator why I picked it up was it was on sale at FYE. The sticker price on this was uh, twelve ninety nine. Every once in a while they will have a pretty good uh, bargain Bruggins on LPs that I've seen recently have been pretty interesting, impressive for FYE. And another one actually that I uh, picked up at FYE because it was uh, at a discount price, a group called the Bell Brigade. Now you probably haven't heard of these guys. It's a sibling act, a brother and sister. And one of the reasons why I found out about them and had to check them out is their grandfather is John Williams, the famous film composer. And I love John Williams film music, so I had to check these guys out. You know, support the family, right? So, uh, yeah, they've put out two albums so far. I don't think they've put out a third one, uh, just because it's their sophomore album and their self-titled album is their first. A uh, bunch of good stuff. They, they, they're kind of uh, indie pop bordering on art pop, basically. Uh, one of their best songs, in my opinion, uh, only because it's really catchy and I enjoy it. It's probably not quite characteristic of the rest of their sound, is Not The One. Check out that song, and, uh, and then if you like that one, explore them a little bit more. Uh, even though, fair warning, that song is a little bit uncharacteristic of the rest of their stuff, as I said. But, yeah, I really enjoy the Bell Brigade. Yeah, I'm just kind of hoping that we'll see another album from them at some point. And then we're moving on to some of the more uh, noteworthy artists, the more famous artists in my catalog. Uh, Leon Bridges. Yes, I've owned his CDs uh, for quite a while until uh, just uh, three or four months ago. And I decided I liked him enough that I decided to pick up both of them. Yes, uh, coming home and good thing. One reason why I replace some CD, some CDs with LPs, is when the CDs don't have bonus tracks. Some artists do uh, store exclusives like Target exclusives that have bonus tracks, and those are worth getting on CD for me and keeping. But when an artist just does one standard edition across the board, you know why not pick it up on LP if I enjoy it enough? So yeah, Leon Bridges is a fantastic R&B and soul artist, uh, kind of the second coming of Sam Cooke. Just wonderful. If you like Sam Cooke and you haven't checked out Leon Bridges yet, you've got to. And then another much more recent artist uh, whose CDs I have replaced with, uh, or upgraded as far as I'm concerned, up to uh, LPs with from CDs is Harry Styles. Yes, I own both his debut album as well as Fine Line on CD. And uh, this was kind of like with, uh, not only did I replace them right about the same time as uh, Leon Bridges, but yeah, for the same reason. It's like, you know, Harry doesn't go in for these store exclusives like Target or, or whatnot, so you won't find any tracks on CDs than are on the LPs. And yes, I got this one. This one I got new. I think I got it from Amazon. But uh, this one, I actually found the uh, House of Records actually got in a used copy of it, and they only wanted 16 bucks for it. It's a double LP. That's why it was a little bit more up there in price than your average used LP. But uh, yeah, had to pick it up when I saw it on the, uh, the new arrivals. And next up on the list, we have my 2019 album of the year, if you watched my favorite albums of 2019 countdown. And if you didn't, spoiler alert, this was number one. Uh, yes, Tales of America by J.S. Hondara is an outstanding, fantastic, gorgeous album that you've got to hear. It's, it's just wonderful, and needless to say, it was worth replacing the CD with the LP. And, uh, and this was only, yeah, Harry Styles' Fine Line was $16 used. This was $16 new, so it's like, you know, can't get much much better of a bargain than that. And then uh, the last two on my list are my two most recent acquisitions just within the last few weeks. Uh, when uh, Declan McKenna put out his new album, I decided I had to get that on LP and I also at the same time decided to replace the CD version of What Do You Think About the Car with the LP. So yeah, he's just a great artist. Uh, very much uh, his lyrics have a whole lot of substance to them and just a fantastic 
uh, artist all around. So yeah, one of the most promising and best uh, young talents of the 21st century. So yeah. And then the last one on my list, I just picked up last week, and he was in, I believe he was number 10 in my favorite albums of, the, of 2019, uh, Rex Orange County and his uh, most recent album, Pony. Yes, and yes, it's the same thing with pretty much all the other ones on this list. I liked the CD enough, and there were no bonus tracks available on any, any uh, domestic editions. Replace it with the LP. And another benefit to uh, replacing CDs with LPs is if they are popular enough, uh, I can take the CDs to my uh, local store and get some trade credit, store credit, for uh, selling them. So, yeah, that's, you know, winners all around, right? Okay, now, uh, don't click away yet, because I'm not quite done, as you could probably tell by the uh, time remaining indicator at the bottom of your YouTube window there. Uh, when I was putting this list together, the list that you just saw, I decided I was having enough fun doing it that I decided I was going to throw in another list that was uh, very closely related to the previous list, and that is albums that I bought on LP that I have not gotten rid of the CDs of yet. It's probably not grammatically correct, but anyway. Uh, yes, there are some albums here. I have reasons for some of them, but not quite all of them, as to why I have not gotten rid of the CDs yet, uh, considering what I was just saying a few minutes ago about how I could use the shelf space. But yeah, I just thought it would be fun to go through some of these, and maybe in, do in so doing, I might uh, come to the realization that it's okay to get rid of the CDs for at least some of these. Uh, but some of them, as I said, I have excuses. Hotel California by the Eagles. Come on, it's a classic. And uh, the reason I have not gotten rid of this one yet is uh, because, first of all, this was in my sister's uh, uh, collection of LPs. That's one reason. And also because I have a box set of all of the Eagles uh, releases. And so they're, they're not in their original jewel cases. So I, if I got rid of the Hotel California CD, I had to get rid of the whole freaking uh, box sets, and I'm not doing that. So... Uh, on to the next one, and this was all was also in my sister's uh, LP collection, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road by Elton John, another absolute classic. And uh, the reason I'm keeping this one is because, or keeping the CD of this one is because I've got the two CD deluxe edition of that. And the second disc is really kind of cool because it is a covers album of songs from the album covered by other artists. And uh, some of the artists, uh, Hunter Hayes is one of them, and there are a couple others that I, I, I'm a f uh, fans of, a fond of. So yeah, I'm keeping that one, definitely. But yeah, this is fun to listen to, and, and of course, as I said, it's, it was in my sister's collection, so... If you don't uh, recognize the merits of Goodbye Yellow Brick Road as a classic album, then I don't know what to say. This one is uh, moving on to one that is uh, very, very obscure and known to very few people, uh, aside from me, The Connells. And this actually kind of ties into what I was mentioning about uh, Jack from Jack's, Tra Jack's Tracks Records, and he asked me what my favorite artist was. I don't know if they're necessarily my absolute favorite artist, but when most people ask me that sort of question, I try to turn them on to the Connells, just because I love them so much. And this is their album, Boylan Heights. I believe this is their sophomore album. And I found this one at House of Records a few few years ago. So it's like, I had to pick it up. When Whenever I see a Connells album on LP, I'm going to have to pick it up. And yeah, the reason why I'm keeping the CD of this one, just because I have all their other albums on CD. And so it's like, you know, just take one out. Would I'm weird that way. I kind of have to keep the CD collection intact. And then we have Big Country. They are from the 80s, and they are... A lot of people consider them a one-hit wonder, but I don't. Uh, my brother is a huge fan of Big Country. He was back in the 80s when they started. Uh, maybe not so much now, although he still listens to them, and it was his fandom that made me pick up their CDs. And then eventually I have... I actually have... This is their debut album, The Crossing, and I actually have their first three, or do I have four, uh, albums on LP as well as the CDs. And the reason I'm keeping the CDs is because they are the remastered editions with a handful of bonus tracks on each one. So, a very good band, and they are, as I said, they do not deserve to be resigned to one-hit wonder status. Uh, In a Big Country is their 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 one-hit wonder. Uh, Fields of Fire is another fantastic song, uh, and I'm going to have to do a video on them at some point because they have so many good songs in their catalog. They deserve to be uh, taken a closer look at, honestly. And then these uh, next two, actually this, just this next one, I think I found at uh, FYE, uh, On My One by Jake Bug. Yes, I have this on CD, and um, so yeah, for one reason it was the bargain of it all that I picked it up, but also I have the Japanese import CD of this album, and it has a couple bonus tracks on it. So it's a very good album, not characteristic of Jake Bug, and probably not his best album, but still very good. Good enough for me to buy on LP. And these these next two, I actually picked up at Skip's Going Out of Business sale uh, last last year, last summer, yeah. 
And so that's kind of the sentimental reason. And also because these two are another artist, uh, examples of artists whose entire discography I have on CD and don't feel like break, you know, breaking it up just because of one album. Uh, Keen, Perfect Symmetry, my favorite album of theirs. Uh, it's, it's just great. It's a little bit more new wave-ish, a little bit more 80s inspired than their other albums. And in some, for some reasons, that's kind of why I like it so much. But yeah, a great, great album. Spiraling is a fantastic song. And uh, it's pretty much, I could pretty much cite every song off this uh, track list, and it's just great. And one of the reasons why I decided to pick it up is just because it's such a good album. And then the debut album by The Script. Uh, this was also in uh, uh, Skip's Going Out of Business Sale, and things were 60% off or something, 50 or 60% off at that point. So I decided I had to pick up anything that just looked good, even if I already had it on CD. I have noticed uh, in the last couple of years that listening to an LP of an album is just more of an event for me than listening to the CD of it. And so I, you know, some albums that I may not be huge, huge on, kind of like the script. I mean, I like the album. I maybe even really like it, but I don't quite love it. So I figured maybe getting the LP would, um, and listening to it would maybe make me have a new appreciation for it. So, and another artist that I actually have both of his <laughs> albums on CD, but decided to pick up on LP, um, Charlie Puth, Nine Track Mind, as well as Voice Notes. Uh, Voice Notes is another one that I picked up at Skip's Going at a Business Sale. First of all, with Voice Notes, it's a different cover than the CD version. So that's one reason to have it. And with uh, Nine Track Mind, I actually have an import deluxe edition that has five or six extra songs on it. So that's my justification for having a uh, an album with a bit of a dubious reputation as uh, or reception as uh, Nine Track Mind. So. But hey, I love Charlie Puth. He's just a fantastic artist. And then next up on my list is Colors by Beck. Um, my favorite Beck album, at least right now it is. I'm still kind of delving into his catalog, working my way through his catalog. But yeah, very 80s inspired. And there we go again. My, the, the 80s kid in me loves this album. It's fantastic. And uh, this was actually on special at House of Records for $32, I think. And this is normally like a $50, $55 album. And it is two LPs. And... It is. Uh, it plays back at 45 RPM, which is kind of interesting, and that is one reason why I still have the CD. It's because you know if you listen to this album, you have to uh, flip over the vinyl four times or three times to listen to the full album. So it's a bit of a laborious listen in that respect. You know, you kind of actually have to get up and expend physical energy. <laughs> I mean, come on, really, uh, as opposed to the CD, which you know plays all the way through without interruption. So. But yeah, it was a good bargain. That was one, re one reason why I had to pick it up. But also the, the packaging is kind of cool because each one of the colors is its own individual, what do you call this, acetate? No, I don't think so. But anyway, um, yeah, very cool. Cool packaging on this album. Just fantastic. So I kind of had to pick it up just, just mainly for the novelty of it all. Okay, now the next one on this list uh, will not surprise anybody who knows me well enough or is a uh, good friend of mine. Uh, this artist was bound to show up on this list sooner or later, right? Weird Al Yankovic. Yes, what can I say? Now, uh, if I had been as much into LPs, what, this was three years ago or something, three or four years ago, as I am now, I probably would have opted to buy the LP version of his Complete Works box set. You know, it came in an accordion packaging. It's really cool. But as it was at the time, I was more into CDs, so I bought the CD version. So, yeah, hindsight, right? But anyway, so, yeah, I cannot claim to have all of his albums on LP. I just have his first one, his self-titled one, as well as Mandatory Fun, his last album. And I can't remember exactly what persuaded me to pick this up on LP. It might have just been a, a whim purchase or something, but uh, uh, this one I'm pretty sure I found used at House of Records a while ago. It still had the plastic on it at the time, but it's it kind of peeled off uh, since then. But yeah, as I said, if I could go back in time, I would probably have opted for the LP version of his box set, but as it is, you know. And then the next, next to last album in my list is a Canadian album uh, by a Canadian artist, which would kind of figure right. Uh, Sam Roberts, uh, his album We Were Born in Flame. It's a fantastic album, and I tell the story, it's kind of a convoluted weird story about how I came to have both the LP and CD versions of this. I did a Canada Week, uh, was it earlier this year or last year? I can't remember what it was. Uh, but in, yeah, this was in my top three favorite Canadian albums of all time, so I tell the story there. Don't want to repeat it here to make the video too long. But yeah, this is a fantastic album. It's a uh, well, if he were an American artist, I would say it's Americana, but it's it's Canadiana, I guess you'd say. But yeah, kind of kind of rootsy, kind of like uh, maybe Mellencamp or Neil Young-ish, 
So, but yeah, just one great song after another on here. Uh, Where have all the pe good people gone? Brother Down is the uh, the big hit that he had down here in the states. Uh, he just he didn't catch on here in the states, but he's made several albums and put them out in Canada. So he's kind of a a stalwart Canadian artist. Every part of me is another great song on here. But yeah, stream this uh, album if you can, if you find it. Don't walk away. Eileen is another great song on here. Just one good song after another on that album. Cannot be missed. And now for the last album in my list. Uh, I've saved the best for last in a way, because this album is very um, symbolic of a very good, close, and personal and important friendship in my life that I've made through my YouTube channel, and that is the big reason why I'm still keeping the CD as well as having the LP of this album. It is Bleachers and and uh, his first album, Strange Desire, Jack Antonoff, a big producer, songwriter, and uh, he's had a couple of bands in the past, and he's just fantastic at everything that he does, practically. But uh, yeah, this one is just great. I, I kind of found out about the songs by way of the Love, Simon soundtrack uh, from a couple of years ago, but uh, I, when I realized that a couple of, of my favorite songs on that soundtrack came from this album, and because this friend of mine uh, hyped it up so much, kept talking it up so much, I decided I had to pick it up. And I was not sorry from the moment that I first heard it on CD. I loved the CD so much it was worth full price for me to buy it on LP. But yes, uh, my friend, he's a, he's a fellow YouTuber. Not as much of a YouTuber as he was in the past, but still. I'm just looking at this album reminds me of my friendship with him. So that is one reason why it's just so important in my life. And uh, I, I enjoy putting it on regularly, be it the CD or the LP. It's just, yeah, it's just fantastic. And, uh, and his sophomore album is just as good. Uh, forgive me, but oh, Gone Now is the name of it. I was going to say, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, my memory is still recovering from the past few weeks. What can I say? But anyway, uh, to avoid rambling on any more than I have already rambled, let's close out the video. I hope you enjoyed these two lists of my uh, albums that I own on LP that I still own or used to own on CD. And uh, the list is probably going to grow over the coming months and years. I uh, said so just about anything to uh, conserve shelf space for CDs. Uh, even though I don't picture myself buying a whole bunch of CDs uh, going forward, uh, except any fun CDs that I end up finding in my bargain bags. But uh, anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.